Now, from primary school itself, it, uh, it's quite unique because in Malaysia you have choices. Uh, how would you want to participate in the primary school education? Children begin primary school at the age of seven for a period of six years. Primary schools are divided into two, two categories national primary school or the vernacular schools. Vernacular schools are scholar Janis Kabangsaan, are either Chinese Tamil as the medium of instruction, whereas the national primary school or is called Skola Kabangsaan, uh, is the, where the medium of instruction is uh, in Malay, except for, or at least for this year in 2011, it's Bahasa Malay, Malaysia, except for English, Science and Mathematics. National type schools are further divided into Chinese national type schools, called Janis Kebangsaan China, and Tamil national type schools are called Skola Janis Kebangsaan Tamil, or SRJKT. There were also other types of national type schools. Previously, besides Chinese and Tamil ones, there were also uh, Telugu and Punjabi language schools that due to dwindling numbers have subsequently ceased to exist. The role of promoting uh, the, the role of these schools were to promote, uh, besides language, a cultural perspective. The degree of government funding to national schools and government operated. Now, the difference uh, between the national schools and the national type schools are um, predominantly from the, the degree of funding the government provides. Uh, all national schools are operated and fully run by government as opposed to the national. Uh, type schools are generally aided. However, there are some exceptions to this rule. Now, in spite of uh, having three variations in the primary school system, all schools admit students regardless of the race and the racial uh, and racial and the language background. Now, all these three schools are uni unified through a common curriculum. They all share the common curriculum for non-language classes. However, in 2003, the teaching of maths and science in English was introduced. So, some of the vernacular schools had to deal with three languages. They had to deal with Tamil or Chinese. They had to deal with Malay. And they also have to deal with English in an extensive manner because they have to teach maths and science in English besides just the English language. However, this policy will be reverted back to its original state in 2012. Now, obviously, there is a great criticism uh, from from a very global perspective how the schools are kept separately. People are polarized in their thinking, and this was as in, at this and most importantly, it was introduced at such an early age. To handle this problem, the government introduced a, a, a type of school called Skola Vavasan or Vision School in English. So, under this concept. Uh, three schools will be situated in the same compound. They will maintain their individual identity. However, they will share facilities and resources. And they will be managed differently, but managed uniformly. So it was believed that using this mechanism, people of different races will be able to retain their cultural identity. However, participate in a dialogue with each other when they meet and, part uh, and they move about in this school setting. However, this school, this school system or the vision school did not gain much traction because the Chinese and the Indian communities believed that they were not treated as equal. So therefore, the use of their mother tongue and their cultural identity will subsequently be diluted as opposed to if they were individually situated elsewhere. Now, when it comes to secondary school, things are less complicated because the general government perspective of secondary school is an extension of the national type school. So there is not much room for variance in the national secondary national curriculum. Uh, people who participate in the national school will undertake five years of secondary school in which they will be they will be introduced to formalized testing one in, in the third year of the secondary school and another one as an exit exam on the fifth year of education. Now, however, the education system, the secondary education in Malaysia are quite heavily stratified. 
what will happen is based on your primary school exit you will enter into primary secondary one so they are five years right secondary one uh, they will then uh, position you based on your results in primary school whether you should be in in living skill commerce and a few different uh, approaches to a, a curricular or combination of subjects then you will have your major exam which is called PMR which will be held when you are 15 years old or third year of secondary school which will then divide the population into uh, science and maths so therefore once you are you are predetermined to go to arts you will never have an opportunity to switch to science uh, however science students have an opportunity to reverse to arts now to to also add some spice to the secondary school education uh, there are about 60 independent Chinese schools who will who have remained independent financially and still continuously to provide an opportunity for Malaysian students to participate in the Chinese language education or education from the Chinese language perspective and students who still want to maintain education through English language will then pursue their education in a private international school however these systems are not funded by the government the, within the national public school we also have a few uh, few uh, now pre-university pre education in Malaysia is another battleground first of all from the government perspective you have two major options you can take STPM uh, which is managed by the Malaysian Examination Council which is a choice for mostly non malays and on the other hand the government also offers matriculation which is managed by individual universities and some matriculation through some matriculation centers as a choice for many Malay students to as an opportunity to uh, escalate to tertiary education subsequently uh, obviously there is lots of debate of, of why there is a need to have two different uh, pre-university settings and there's also debate in the intensity of testing because generally the STPM is viewed as a two-year program and students need to participate in a single uh, public examination setting as opposed to matriculation um, it's generally a year and, and some may be a bit longer and it's done internally uh, and has lots of opportunity for continuous assessment and things like that however when students apply to tertiary education they are viewed as equal so there's always a contesting point of view of how this needs to be handled being said so or having said so that a major a significant amount of Malaysians opt out to do pre-university education privately now when it comes to private education you have a whole variety to choose from so you have your Canadian options so you have the uh, British options you have the Australian options you have the American options and then you have this new phenomenon called uh, university foundation programs since there's a uh, siege uh, not siege there's a since there's a sudden uh, boost in private education every university has its own foundation program so that is also a viable choice for many uh, Malaysians to undertake pre-university studies now when it comes to tertiary education once again uh, uh, from the public universities point of view they are generally have is their own responsibilities and then you have private that will take in almost anyone as long as you meet the minimum requirements what we have is we have um, an organization called MQA that regulates whether it's public or private and there's a great move uh, from the government to view education as a single private secondary tertiary in the recent years there's a great uh, consented move by the government to uh, to harmonize the tertiary education industry current for most uh, Malaysians they view it from a dichotomous view they believe there is the government institutions and the private and then the debate goes on which being better and which being inferior and superior however there's a great move from the government in the recent years through the, a single entity called MQA to harmonize this dichotomy dichotomous perspective 
the government will systematically re uh, re relinquish its responsibility on undergraduate education and escalate its expertise and resources to generate high-end postgraduate uh, education. And they would like the private players to come and fill in the space. So they have introduced things like Setara and, uh, and Copa and Copia to harmonize these two entities so that we could uh, collectively contribute to the development of the nation. Now I've covered uh, briefly the social and historical perspective to curriculum. However, I, I am fully aware that you are aware that this is just the tip of the iceberg. There is so many more dimensions to look at curriculum design historically and socially. As I was telling you in my one of my earlier slides that philosophy gives you the, the, the direction Psychology gives you the mode of transport, but history and social uh, uh, social sociology gives you the context to participate in.